Alright folks, uh, thank you for joining me this beautiful warm Saturday evening uh, towards the end of April 2023. Um, I'm, I w In the back of my mind I was expecting this was going to be a disaster and I was just going to chuck it and get pissed off and screw it up and, uh, and it turned out not to be. It's been a very, very interesting um, step because it involves many, many steps. And instead of, um, let's go ahead and get the lights. Instead of, um, let's do it like this. So instead of just, believe it or not, this was done. I had already rusted the whole dump bed. I slightly overdid it, but it still looked great. It looked pretty good. Blew me away. It was my first attempt ever. But uh, it didn't look quite right to me because I had overdone it. So what is the solution? We always talk about crash and burn and don't be afraid to make mistakes and go back and uh, take the paint off or fix the plastic or resolder the metal and start that step all over again. That's exactly what I did here. I actually reshot at least the sides in the back of the dump bit one more time. So that's three coats of white paint, a fourth coat being a, a rust color. There's four coats of paint on that dump bed there because I shoot the paint nice and thin. It doesn't look bad. It actually gives it a look I was shooting for. So here is the redone, almost finished portion, at least on the passenger side. So what I decided to do, rather than just come in here in one shot and even with the sponge technique, right? Come in here and just Globby try and imitate the picture there on the computer. I said, you know what? I'm just going to work with the sponge technique and dabbing the, a regular brush, you know, kind of like dry brushing. Um, I'm just going to do this in layers. Light layers, go around, come back the next day, attack another portion. Gives me a, a chance to walk away from the project so I don't overtax my brain and start making mistakes, start rushing it. I love the results. This is a mistake. It's going to go. And I got to darken these back here. But as you can see, uh, as you can see right here, uh, it actually came up pretty gosh darn good. Excuse me. Um, I'm extremely, extremely happy with the results. Now, the driver's side of the dump bed. That, unfortunately, pretty much even on our prototype down there in Austin, Texas, um, on the prototype, pretty much the driver's side dump bed, there's almost no paint on it. It's pretty much just a wall of rust. So I'm going to, I've figured out how to attack that. I experimented today. We're going to go back to the hairspray technique. Uh, improved hairspray technique for 125th scale. Uh, big rig models so I went ahead and I've been practicing um, this is the box I use to practice my sponge technique so I said why don't I shoot it with hairspray uh, right here why don't I shoot it with hairspray let it dry and shoot it with the body color and come back and see even though the top paint is not made for the hairspray technique it will not dissolve in water there's got to be a way for me to break the surface so the water goes underneath the, that paint and activates the hairspray causing the chips or large portions of this to be released for our technique we're going to use especially on the other side the driver's side it's going to be critical and sure as shooting it worked now this was just a quick sorry about that this was just a quick some light on this this was just a quick you know um experiment in the backyard so i wanted to do it under a little bit more controlled conditions so what i went ahead i grabbed a piece of pvc pipe that i use out of my sprinklers constantly uh, but i'm always using this piece of uh pvc pipe as a test bed for different methods uh, paint colors mixing decantering everything i what we do here on our workbench so using the same process i i, I shot the experimental paint colors that had been on there for a while, this dark green and dark blue. I shot that with hairspray. 
I let that dry, it created a barrier, as long as you don't have moisture or water. And for the dark green color, which in our case on our bed will be rust, I shot it with Tamiya flat white or semi flat white um, primer. That stuff is not made for the hairspray technique. That particular brand and type of paint will not dissolve with water. Uh, it'll only dissolve with a paint thinner or lacquer thinner actually. So what I do is I come in here, I soak the piece. I Actually before I soak it, I get my hobby knife, real sharp blade, and I just nick it or put a little line through the paint. Don't really care if the underneath paint color shows through. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm just breaking the surface like I did right there and then flooding the area with water letting it soak a few minutes then I come back you're gonna use a little bit more force than if you had to use the traditional hairspray technique but look what I was able to accomplish this is the exact technique we need to use on the driver's side of the dump bed and we pulled it off guys Lights, 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 lights. And pretty much I, I just had to do starter piercings just to pierce the surface. Not necessarily uh, chip away the paint, but in some cases I did. It's as long as you can break that surface and you put water on it, the water will start to soak underneath. Touch the hairspray barrier and let the hairspray dissolve, creating its design effect. And it starts to float away your chunks of white. Okay, so we've been practicing different techniques. Dry brushing, hairspray technique, the sponges. We also went ahead and used our dot filter. I think it's called dot filter technique developed by an art school out in Spain. And what we did, we used that right here. So we obviously don't know, by looking at the video, what the front of the dump bed is going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and use my artistic license, or your guys' artistic license, to simulate something realistic that I used to see on uh, railroad freight cars in terms of rust and weathering. And this is what we came up with. Let me get my lights set up here. Back so we don't crush it. Pretty good, huh? Not too shabby. So you know you get those streaks. Uh, that dot filter is it was developed. The idea is you coat the surface you want to weather with dots, different color dots actually. Let it dry for a few minutes, come back with your mineral spirits, and just start to lightly draw down those dots sometimes aluminum elim, eliminating them totally but you still get the desired streaks that something was there once upon a time also over here you can see where i use the sponge technique on the edges down here too we're not done with this we're still going to goof around with it the cab awning you can see where I went ahead and just or the cab overhang I don't know if it's called an awning so they're subtle uh, I was reluctant to fully rust out a hundred percent almost the side of my dumb bed but after thinking about it I'm modeling the prototype I really want to use that technique plus some modifications I have in my head to those techniques to come out with what I'm envisioning in my brain right now guys so this thing worked out great I recommend it if you guys want to do something like this and at least practice try it out I recommend practice on a styrene piece of styrene sheet or something like that but I definitely recommend check out the guys who do beautiful weathering jobs, who are artists in the craft. Check out their YouTube channels right here on YouTube and, and take your lessons from them. Uh, 
you can follow what I'm doing, kind of get a gist of it. And, and I'll point out the crash and burn parts and the parts that work and the parts that don't. But if you really, really want to master that technique, definitely I recommend checking out uh, fellow YouTubers who do that all the time and with spectacular results. Okay, let's see what else can I talk about here. I dump it. Let's move the camera over a little bit. Okay, <clears throat> so I had to break out the Alclad paint, and uh, since I was using Alclad paint, and that's usually special occasions, I brought out other pieces of models that I have not shot with that paint because I was waiting for this special occasion. That special occasion was today, so. You know, you guys have seen the, the cab already, though. So we went ahead. We um, kind of did a light wet sanding in certain areas. We came back, reshot it with... Um, we got rid of pretty much of all the green we had used prior in other video episodes when we did this. We took it back down to almost a silver. It's metallic finish, what the sheet metal would look like underneath. And then uh, we highlighted or used... This would be called... Uh, not post shading. This is pre-shading the pre-shading technique and uh, we mixed our perfect perfect green I'm looking for my template I mixed the green I feel is perfect for our Freightliner down in Austin Texas and let's put this on the ground here Okay, so this is the green we were using. It's a little too dark and it's a little too traditional green and it was not matching the Freightliner on the video. So I went ahead and um, kept practicing, kept uh, toning it down, kept lighting it up. Uh, a couple of tips that Tom Klein passed up down to me back then. Uh, I went ahead and used them, of course, and I started to have better results for what I was looking for. You can tell how many variations of that green I did mix up. Each one of these is a different mix sample. This is what we shot the video with last time. I removed that. This is what we've been working at. This is my finished color for my AMT Freightliner dump truck project. This is the green I'm going to use with light silver color or silver coat of paint underneath kind of poking through in certain areas so I'm real tickled pink I'm real happy you could see where I practice my sponge technique here this was a great time give me um well let's check out the I had not done marker lamps for a freight liner I had them set aside uh, I don't, I wasn't going to use the AMT provided marker lamps, marker lights or driving lights, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I went ahead and found a set in 132nd scale, which to me was perfect. So I went ahead and I, I stripped the chrome off. I shot them with Alclad, uh, I think it's called white aluminum today. And I shot them in two-tone yellow or orange whatever you want to call it but there's actually two colors in the glass part i don't know if you can see it on camera let's go ahead and zoom in as close as we can get what i did is uh since i was goofing around anyways by shooting a traditional orange first and then coming back with a lighter yellow just glance kind of like i hit it from this direction back off so you guys can see what I'm doing. I hit it from, <laughs> I hit it going in this direction, the yellow. I got a, a two-tone effect, almost a 3D uh, where there's depth to those lights. I love that I did that. I don't know why. I was just goofing around, really. Um, and it came out fantastic. So those, 
marker lamps. Yeah, what's the big deal with marker lamps, right? Uh, or driving lamps. They're, they're a dime a uh, dozen. But uh, just using that technique, combined with the outclad white aluminum, I went ahead and painted my extended mirrors for my uh, Mar Marilyn Monroe diamond reel. Uh, she was waiting for me to install these. I also went ahead and uh, I haven't installed my uh, aluminum tubing, my metal smokestacks on the diamond reel. I was waiting to shoot the bottom parts with outclad anyways and I did that today. Went ahead and did the same thing to the back of our cab. We talked about that last time. I went ahead and reshot the color of the fuel tank that I had originally. Uh, I went ahead using the outclad paint, the white aluminum. I reshot this, I cleaned it up. So let's go ahead and take out those uh, tank bands and see how she came out. I was also able to shoot the freight, uh, white, in this case, white freight liner front emblem badge in a white aluminum also i'll go ahead and with a, a dark wash i'll go in there and clean that up and make the detail pop out You know, there's a metal tube inside this fuel tank. And this is not the fuel tank that comes with the AMT Freightliner kit, by the way. But there's a metal tube in there. This thing weighs a ton. I love to do that stuff. One day we'll talk about how I'm building metal fuel tanks for our 125th big rigs. Our Freightliner down in Austin, Texas has black fuel tank bands in this case I didn't want to shoot black we used a weathered black or a dark gray I guess you could call it Let's check how it's gonna look the other side because the fuel tank does weigh a ton with that metal piece installed inside the metal tube uh, I just don't like gluing it straight to the side of the frame, the sides of the frames. So what I do is I'll drill holes out where the fuel tank is going to mount onto the frame. I drill the same hole in the frame. I drill the hole here in the, the mounting assembly. And then I put these little metal rods in there, brass actually. So I'll glue this into the holes I drilled in the side of our frame and that keeps it on there, keeps it from popping off. It helps a lot. Eventually you can still pop it off, but let's see. One last thing before we sign off. I mentioned earlier on another video episode about starting to work on weathering the frame, the chassis of the AMT Freightliner kit, and I already started that.
the front part here, these bolts and the, the leaf spring underneath, that's already done. The back part of the frame, I won't show it now, but the back and the top is already done. I saved these portions here. They don't look done because they're not. Um, I wanted to do it on video here for you guys, so I'm going to do it real quick. Let me just show you the top of our chassis. So we'll use different techniques, different colors, dust effects, mud effects, streaking effects. And we're going to come up with a really, really neat weathered chassis or frame, rolling chassis, whatever you want to call it. Let's go ahead and clean up these two guys right here. So pretty much I think we are done. So the video might cut off as I'm doing this, but let's just go ahead and have some fun with this. Soak your brush in white mineral spirits. Take off any excess because you're going to have tons of excess as they're coming in here. And you just draw down in one direction, go across where the boats don't need. You can change the angle of the direction, but keep going in the same direction. Start to mimic what rainwater does, or what rainwater would do with this gal sitting in your driveway or in some parking lot somewhere. So we'll go around the nut, the bolt. So you're gonna go for like a half moon effect. Clean up all your paint or weathering uh, effects around. There you go. So let's go ahead and clean up this cross member here. So here we want the, the, the mud, the dirt to accumulate in the nooks and crannies and seams of this uh, suspension uh, assembly piece. So how you're gonna achieve that is just cover the piece in the product color or product desired effect you're gonna use or wanna achieve. Let it dry real good or let it dry and then come back and kind of flood the area with mineral spirits see that how cleaned it up almost now believe it or not the beauty of doing this uh, on your on your on your builds is it looks like we took off a whole bunch of paint and it was not what we were going for as soon as this uh, mineral spirit starts to dry, which is less than a minute, you're going to notice that the whole piece is going to take on the color of what you thought you just took off, took off. You'd have to go back there and wipe and wipe um, two, three times to take off the product. But uh, in this way, what you're doing is you're achieving the desired effect of dirt and mud having accumulated in all the nooks and crannies of this suspension assembly component. All right, this thing's gonna cut off in about 30 seconds. Uh, I'll shoot some more videos. It's a slow process and that's no problem. I kind of intended that. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Any questions, critiques, adv uh, ad advice, anything you guys want to share, no big deal. Um, participate. That's all I ask. If you can use my videos anytime you're placing choosing for whatever you want to use it in your hop to promote the hobby. Don't have to ask for my permission or anything. Just throw me a bone every once in a while and send some subscribers over here. Uh, mention my name, please, always. And um, I'd really appreciate that. But... Um, 
guys like what you see today go ahead and hit the like button subscribe and um, thank you for joining me